new president, Lyndon Johnson, ordered these questions answered. The President's Commission on the Assassination of President Kennedy, commonly referred to as the Warren Commission, was established seven days after JFK's assassination. The commission concluded that President Kennedy was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald, that Oswald acted alone. It also concluded that Jack Ruby acted alone when he killed Oswald two days later. At first, it was praised. The New York Times called it a comprehensive and convincing account of the circumstances of President Kennedy's assassination. Time magazine saying it put the rumors to rest, writing its great value comes from the thoroughness with which the commission carried out its investigation, from its laying to rest many malignant rumors and speculations, from its fascinating wealth of detail by which future historians can abide. But perception then shifted. Two years later, in 1966, Mark Lane published a bestseller called Rush to Judgment. The book criticized the commission, claiming interviews uh, with witnesses exposed serious flaws. That same year, in New Orleans, District Attorney Jim Garrison launched a much derided investigation of his own, which reported to reveal a vast conspiracy. Oliver Stone would later turn one of his books into the 1991 movie JFK. Then Life magazine published frames from the Zapruder film first in the days after the assassination and then again in the years following. For critics, the graphic home movie of the shooting cast doubt again on the lone gunman theory. Let's bring back our panel, Bert Griffin, former assistant counsel for the Warren Commission, attorney involved in JFK records litigation, Mark Zaid, Robert Groden, the author of JFK, The Case for Conspiracy, and investigative reporter and historian uh, Mark Shaw. Uh, Bert Griffin, as you look back on the Warren Commission, it seems clear that some agencies were not being totally forthcoming uh, with you when they testified in front of the Warren Commission, like, for example, the CIA. Do you look back now, now that you know what you know, and say, if we'd had more information, something might have been different? I don't think anything would have been different. Uh, I do think uh, we would have been even more certain that Oswald was the sole shooter. Uh, and the, one of the most important bits of information that was concealed from us was that Oswald, approximately 10 days before he shot President Kennedy, left a threatening note for uh, special FBI agent James Hosty. Uh, and I think that would have been the starting point for our thinking, when is it possible that he might have thought about doing something to President Kennedy? Uh, certainly, I would say no one with any good sense would have left a threatening note for Hasse at a point that he was thinking of assassinating President Kennedy. But then the question is, what were the important things that were happening in Oswald's life that brought about the assassination. Uh, that's a fact that, that we should have been focusing on, uh, and we did to some extent, uh, but not as thoroughly, I think, as we might have. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.